Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 39. 39. Jeff Friesen. Yeah. And, uh, uh, who's that other guy? <laughs> Cuckoo Kachoo. Yeah. Lone Couture. There you go. Yeah. I got an idea there. Okay, <laughs> good. So, uh, this, uh, this week we'll be giving you a little bit of an injury update. We'll also be talking about goalies and uh, their stats. Mm-hmm. And also uh, Haley and Dolan, some news about those good guys as well. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about playoff positioning. John Tavares getting booed and his welcome <laughs> back to the Islanders, and, or playing against the Islanders, right. and a uh, week in review, and uh, looking ahead for the next week. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay. Uh, just wanted to say a big hello to Joe Thornton and his wife, who is Swiss and from Switzerland, and not Swedish or from Sweden. God, I'm never going to let that down. Nope. <laughs> Uh, I guess I owe an apology to Joe Thornton and his wife. Uh, sorry, I said she was Swedish when she was actually Swiss, and I got grilled over the rakes with, uh, <laughs> I think, every possible angle, Twitter, Discord, uh, YouTube itself, Facebook, yeah. Facebook right. uh, Reddit, like just <laughs> everyone telling me how wrong I was, so I'm, I'm sorry I got that wrong. If there is a silver lining here, it means that they're watching us. So <laughs> the most probably the most corrected thing we've ever had on this show. <laughs> and pretty to, sure. To to be clear, it's not that he thought that Swedish people were Swiss people. <laughs> right. Because he was saying like they're they're not even in the same like geographic location. Yeah, we we got it. He just literally thought at the moment there that she was Swedish and it was an accident. So we apologize for that. Uh, yeah. Moving right along, we wanted to give an injury update. Specifically with the EKs, right? EK9, right. EK65, so... Uh, yeah, I guess both EKs. Yeah. So Carlson re-injured his groin uh, during the Boston game, and it was pretty bad. Um, not bad in the sense that he's going to be out a long time, mm-hmm. but bad in the sense that he probably shouldn't have been playing. Now, um, I've seen a lot of people on all of our different channels like getting upset with the coaching staff and the medical staff. Um, this kind of groin injury, you can't really blame them. I think there's more blame that needs to be put on Carlson for coming back too early. Um, a groin injury, you can't, you know, it's not like a broken bone where you can get an x-ray and you can see, oh, it's still broken. Right. Um, it doesn't really show up on anything unless you really strain it really bad or if you um, tear it in some way, which supposedly he hasn't done, thankfully. So um, it's, and I think I heard, I think it was, uh, it wasn't Jamie Baker, it might have been Brett Hedekin talking about it, saying it's one of those injuries where you feel like you're 100% and you need to give it another three or four days after that to really make sure it's 100% because you're just going to tweak it exactly like he did. Right. So we saw him in the game tweak it. No no contact injury. He just kind of went down um, trying to defend against McAvoy, I think, coming in on him. And he left the game, and then he came back later, and you can tell he wasn't 100%. Mm. He, he was not doing so well. He was on the power play, and that's when Marshawn got the puck and Marshawn I guarantee knew yeah. Carlson's not 100% I could probably just go right around him and that's exactly what he did and scored another shorthanded goal so um, what what really is terrible is, is you know the rest of the league is like oh look at Marshawn burn Carlson yeah. on this play well yeah he has half a groin I knew was going to burn him so um, sure he, he, Marshawn's a great player and it's not easy to defend against but um, yeah, he was playing against a one legged defender right. almost um, and, and then Kane, we don't really know exactly what happened. I think DeBoer said it was a mid-body it, injury. Yes, middle body injury. I don't know what, exactly what that means. I'm thinking either stomach or back or something to that effect. But or he was making a joke. Or, yeah. Because he just didn't want to say what it was. We've heard him say uh, somebody was out with a body injury right. before. Yeah. And I guess that means it rules out any sort of mental issue <laughs> that would right. have been going on. But yeah, for Kane, middle body injury is what they're saying. So. And he missed, he missed the last two games. So mm-hmm. he missed the Colorado game and he missed the game. Uh, against Blackhawks, which was today while we're recording. Um, so um, I don't think Carlson's injury is, you know, serious in the, yeah. in the terms that it's probably going to take a week. And he, and they say it's kind of week to week, but it's most likely going to be a week. Um, I don't think he's going to be out too long. I think he should stay out a little bit longer than he thinks he should. Mm-hmm. Um, as for Kane, we don't really know what's going on. He finished the game in Boston, so it wasn't like he... Um, I don't know, got hurt there. Right. Or who knows, you know? So uh, you can't really speculate on much. Um, 
But I I do have a feeling that if it were playoffs or if the Sharks were fighting for a playoff spot and they didn't have as as much depth as they do, these guys would be playing right now. And this is kind of what we're going to be seeing, I think, the rest of the season yeah. is if a guy has got a nagging injury, something, there's so much depth that someone can step up that they're going to do it and they're going to rest them because the Sharks have to think of the long haul for playoffs, not just one round, but multiple rounds, which right. is multiple weeks long. Right, and that was one of the questions that we got asked during our live segment that's you know, right before this was, you know, should we be making that push to be first in the Pacific or should we be, you know, focusing more on team health? I think for me it's a no-brainer. It's team health. You can you can get uh, an easier opponent, an easier opponent in the first round. It's really not going to mean anything because, again, there's so much parity in this league. And the way the coaching is done at the uh, during the playoffs, they're really striving to get those matchups down correctly, right? So you don't get as much of that, I think, in the regular season. Um, at least it's not as important uh, as during the playoffs. So I don't know. I just don't think that you want to push your players that are injured to be, you know, come back early and try to get that first um, uh, spot in the Pacific. I think it's more important to have everybody healthy. Once you hit that first round, you want everybody there feeling 100%, feeling really good. Uh, last thing you need is to have one of your better players get knocked out because that doesn't just affect the whole series. I mean, that affects that one game. And if you lose that one game because you have a, you're down a player, that affects the whole series, right? Mm -hmm. So the last thing you need to do is be run into a situation like that. We, we don't want that, right? So I think to answer that person's question, yeah, we want to be healthy over just taking first in the Pacific. That's the way I see it, at least. Yeah. So um, moving on from that, there was a lot of talk about the goalies and their stats and, and whatnot. And <laughs> not just this week. I yeah. Think all season long. Yeah. It, it's been an ongoing thing, right? And mm -hmm. and we've seen the stats and we know the numbers. From, uh, you know, Martin Jones and Aaron Dell are pretty much at the bottom of the pile in terms of the, the top 40 goalies, let's say, in the league. Yeah. They're basically at the bottom of that list. Um, you know, again, I have a really hard time using goals against average and save percentage as the measuring stick for how good these guys are doing or if they're any good at all. And for me, those numbers are more reflective of the team's inability to play defense around them. We've never said on the show, and we've said this a couple times that we've never said this, was Martin Jones is not an elite goalie. He's a very good goalie, but he's not an elite goalie. And I think he faces a lot of high danger chances, a lot of breakaways, mm -hmm. a lot of you know odd man rushes, a lot of cross crease passes, one timers, and that kind of thing. And, and yes, these elite goaltenders they can stop them, but I think he's he needs more help. You can't feed him lots of high danger chances. He needs to see the softer shots, right? He needs to see a lot of the low danger stuff. Don't lay down and block those. Let him get through, but let him see it and let him let it hit him. Let him get warmed up, right? It's those high danger chances. That's where we need to shut them down is not allow these passes to go across the crease where he has to slide, right? And it's really easy for these guys. They're, they're professionals. I mean, they, they lift it. It's easy. Go top shelf all day. When a goal is sliding across, he's sliding very low. So it's, it's just one of those things where I just feel like there's more that the defense, not defensemen, but the team defense can do to help Martin Jones, to help Aaron Dell. And I had to come up with an analogy for this, right? Mm -hmm. we, one of the guys that I was talking with had said, you know, is it a coincidence that Aaron Dell and Martin Jones are having the worst season ever <laughs> right now, right? Is it a coincidence? Um, are they both really just that bad right now, or is it indicative of another issue? And I said, okay, this guy gets it, right? And so my response was an analogy. You know, if you've got a lamp that has two light bulbs in it and none of the, neither light bulb works, is your first inclination to change both the light bulbs, or is it to check to see if the lamp's plugged in, right? So to me, it's again, indicative of a bigger problem. It's probably not that both light bulbs have burned out at the same time. It's probably that the lamp's not plugged in and the lamp not being plugged in, in this case, obviously being the team defense around it. There's other things, there's, there's a bigger issue to deal with and it's not just these goalies suck. That's, that's <laughs> my take on it, so. I think that's the easy answer. I think a lot of people think yeah. it's, there is an easy answer and there's not. Um, I think a lot of people were also disappointed that the Sharks did not go after a goalie at the deadline. Yep. Um, I think we've been saying all along that they shouldn't go after a goalie, and we didn't think that they would. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that it came true, otherwise we'd look really dumb. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I still go back, uh, and Martin Jones is the Sharks goalie, and I think, like it or not, you're going to be stuck with him, obviously now because the trade deadline's done. But right. Um, we've been saying all season long that the Sharks team defense is going to get better. They're going to clamp down. Uh, Jones is going to come back to form. Mm -hmm. And lately, I think he's been playing a lot better. Um, he knows he needs to be better. 
and we've seen stretches where he's they you know they get these win streaks and he's yeah. only letting in two or less goals and that's about right for Martin Jones. He's never going to lead the league in shutouts. He's right. not that kind of goalie. Um, he he's just not elite. And right. by elite, it's not it's not a terrible thing. And we've talked about this in previous episodes. Sharks basically got elite defensemen and not Offensive. so elite yeah. right and not so elite goalie. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at Montreal, who is surging to make the playoffs because Carey Price is an amazing goalie mm-hmm. and he's leading the team in stopping and and getting wins um that's one philosophy and the other one is what the sharks are doing with with defense right. um, uh, more money spent on defense so um i think in the long run if you compare those two teams who's who's better right montreal the sharks obviously the sharks right. so and and we'll find out actually this week because we're playing <laughs> against montreal um but i i think um martin jones is is clamps it down in the playoffs uh, if you look at his career numbers and I always bring this up because everyone wanted Bobrovsky on the team but Bobrovsky's <laughs> career numbers are horrendous when it comes to playoffs and Martin Jones is the absolute opposite so um, I'd rather have a goalie like Martin Jones who is fairly average maybe a little bit above mm-hmm. maybe a little bit below average going in the regular season and then when playoffs start he just raises that up yeah. and that's exactly the kind of goalie that we have I, I take a page out of uh, Logan Couture's book here, and, and he said the same thing on a, on a post game or pre game or whatever it was. You know, it, from good offense or from good defense, you get good offense, and I think that that's the key for us. I think if we play good defense, we're going to help shut all these other chances down. These high danger chances are going to get limited, and we're going to get moving on the offensive side just that much more. And we're already an incredibly offensive threat on mm-hmm. the ice for everybody else. So moving on from the whole the goalie discussion to <laughs> some uh, some of our not really prospects, but uh, well, I guess a, a prospect, and then you know the new guy on the team, Michael Haley, who's a, a fan favorite, by the way. I had him at <laughs> uh, I saw him at practice, and I thought you were being sarcastic. No, seriously, <laughs> not 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 at all sarcastic. Yeah. He is a absolute fan favorite. He comes out on the ice, and everybody's going Haley. Every, you know, you think it was Jumbo coming out, but yeah. and then when he gets off the ice, there was a whole group of kids that were were out there, and you know, other other players are coming off. Yeah. You know, Goodrow comes off, and uh, you know, Braun comes off, and they're you know, hey, how you know, good to meet you, kind of thing, bumping fist. Haley comes out, and he's like a celebrity. He's a <laughs> rock star. I'm telling you, these kids were going nuts for him. It was awesome. Yeah. So, you know, he's again, he's a good locker room guy. He's one of those guys that's uh, got a, a great attitude, and mm-hmm. he brings. He brings a, a fair amount to the table, you know, for a fourth line guy, and we saw it tonight against Chicago as well. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly why the Sharks got him. Is um, maybe he's he's not going to be the technically best player on the team, right. but he's gonna he's gonna be that kind of that glue and that gel that that gets the team together. And the guys love him. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, the team, the the roster guys right. love him, and then you got the fans loving him too. So. Um, Michael Haley we got for free yeah uh, we got to pick him up off of waivers and supposedly there's a rumor that the Calgary Flames had a waiver claim on him as well uh, but the Sharks got him because the Sharks are lower in the standing so they had a higher priority than the Calgary Flames right. so all the haters out there of, <laughs> of Michael Haley pickup um, I wonder if they would be as upset as if Calgary picked them up instead of the Sharks and why you know if, if another team picked him up yeah. for free and the Sharks could have before then why wouldn't the Sharks do it for free yeah. right you're not picking him up in a trade, although we did trade Praplin afterwards. But um, I, I think I, I still don't see anything wrong with it. And I don't think that Haley's going to play every single game between now and the end of the season. They're going to rotate those guys around, and he'll have a bad game here and there, just like everyone else will. Um, and then when it comes to the playoffs, who knows? I think it's a matchup thing depending on who we're playing against. But I'd feel better with him in the lineup if we're playing against a team like Calgary, who's going to try and beat up everybody yeah. to win. So... Um, I'm glad that he's on the team. Yeah, and and again, like you said a couple times, it it didn't. It, there was no cost. There really was mm-hmm. no cost. And the worst thing that happens is we scratch him. I mean, right. really, that's it. So yeah, I'll take that. I'll take him on the roster all day. I mean, he, again, he's he's been fairly reliable on that fourth line. You know, he's he's provided energy. He's yeah, provided hits. Two assists tonight. I think did he? Was it two? Yeah. I know there was the one. I didn't. But two I of thought them. I, I, mean, I thought he assisted on the uh, the empty netter at the end. No, maybe I could be sure, wrong. Yeah. People will probably blast me in the comments for it, so whatever. <laughs> He's not Swiss either. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he is. Swedish, know. right? I just stop there while you're ahead. <laughs> anyway, um, so from the bruiser to the soft mitts, we got yes. uh, Jonathan Dolan, who I've heard on 
Okay, go ahead. Show off the Judas Ulf. Priest. Yeah, it's Ulf Sun. It is. How cool is that? That's really cool. <laughs> so, uh, they, I've heard on on some replays of his, like uh, some of the highlights. I guess that they were calling him uh, Jonathan Dalin. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it. On this show, I probably won't be going that much on the We're accents. We're going to ask Dan. I apologize, Dan. I refuse to do yeah. it. Uh, I'm just going to call him Jonathan Dolan. <laughs> but uh, kids got silky mitts. He was drafted in the second round, I believe, when mm-hmm. he was drafted. And he looks like a really high school player, somebody that maybe down the road could fill in as a top six type player. I mean, I think if the Sharks weren't as deep as they are this season, we might be able to see him towards the end of the year. But um, so far, he's got... As of tonight, he's had three assists in three games for the Barracuda, so he's fitting in nicely. The yep. Barracuda just got a tremendous playmaker and scorer, so he's he's going to be a very high skilled guy. Um, hopefully, he can translate that and keep playing there. Right. So I don't think realistically him being on the Sharks probably won't be at least another full season. Probably, maybe not next season, but maybe the season after that, depending on the roster spots and you know who's still on the team by then. Yeah. Who knows? But um, very good pickup uh, by the Sharks, and I think um, he needed... So there's kind of some rumors there that that either he or his agent on his behalf asked for a trade, and it sounded kind of like the Vancouver GM was like, yeah, he he, he didn't say it outright, <laughs> but he just kind of alluded to it, like some players just don't want to be here. Don't I think he said some players don't want to put in the hard work to get to where they need to go. Um, so it was kind of a dig at him, and I think... Yeah, I don't know. I don't, it's we not don't really me, know the full you. story. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of whatever. Either way, the Sharks, I think, ended up with the better player in the deal. So um, I think uh, it's going to end up well. And there's a little bit of history there with his dad being yeah. a former former player. So uh, I think it's really cool. And also my first original uh, yeah. favorite player, favorite Shark player. So <laughs> it's his son. So yeah. it's awesome. I'm excited. That's actually on my Reddit. Really? My, my flair is Dolan. Nice. 22, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, here's what I'm taking away from this. We've given away first-round draft picks. We've given away second-round draft picks. We've given away... We don't have anything in the cupboards. We do. I think the Sharks can get away with giving away some of these higher-round picks mm-hmm. because they do so well in the sixth, seventh round. I mean, look at uh, Chekovic and Shmelievsky. Right. <laughs> anyway. Shmelievsky. The, the right? Cs. It's CHs. Right. I was calling them before I could try to pronounce oh, it. Anyway. Kevin LeBanc is and, a late. And He's LeBanc. a sixth, I think. Six or seven. I mean, these are guys that are probably going to be... These guys are probably going to be breaking in the NHL soon. LeBanc obviously is doing well in the mm-hmm. NHL. His, uh, DeBoer recently praised him for his power play work. He says he's elite on the power play. That's so. incredible for a guy that was drafted that late. Yeah. You don't see players of high skill come out of those rounds. But my, my point... We need rarely. Yeah. I should say rarely because people are going to correct me again. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, they're going to give you a list of all the players right. that... Have, yeah. yeah. Uh, but my point being that, you know, maybe we can get away with not having a first and a second, um, you know, in, in upcoming drafts. Maybe we're doing such a good job with getting these pieces in, into the system in other ways other than drafting, you know, be, be it trade mm-hmm. or be it looking to the European markets and just signing someone outright, right? Um, so I don't know. I mean, it would be nice to have these higher round picks, yes, but how many times have we seen those not pan out and we've seen other players coming from later rounds or mm-hmm. players coming from other leagues or players coming in through trade and it, it seems to work out. So I think we kind of... I don't want to give a full pass on on trading everything away, although right. I do like the players that we got in return. So in that sense, yeah, I probably would have made the same trades as well, giving up you know a first for a Vander Kane. I'd I'll take a Vander Kane, the known good over the you know twenty something overall. Right. Who knows, right? right. So I, I think I'll give uh, I'll give them a pass on that one because they're doing such a great job outside of the draft as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, I agree. Cool. So going on from that discussion, we wanted to talk about. Playoff positioning. Playoff positioning. Not necessarily with the Sharks. Right. Um, Actually, yeah, this is something I kind of wanted to to bring up, too. It's it's not so much about where we stand. I've already talked about previously, we had someone during the live that had asked about, you know, what's more important, where we're sitting in the position, uh, you know, being in first in the Pacific or whatever. Um, You know, it, it may actually be a better thing pretty soon here to be second in the division, in my opinion, because we're looking at, the Pacific, and we see Vegas is in third place, mm-hmm. and they kind of had a healthy lead, and that healthy lead kind of got a little bit smaller, although I think tonight or, or yesterday it might have expanded just a bit um, over the Arizona Coyotes. They are up eight points, but Arizona has two games in hand. So Arizona's creeping up on Vegas right now. And yeah, if they win those two games, that's only a four-point lead. Right, and, and the thing is, 
you look at the way that they're trending right now, and I know Vegas, I think, won their last four, was it? Uh, five, I believe. Okay, yeah. Four or five, but whatever, yeah, yeah. So there's that. But if you look at the last 10, it was four, five, and one. Now, because they've won, it shifted a little bit. It's now five, four, and one in their mm-hmm. last 10. But Arizona's eight and two. Yeah. So they're trending in the right direction, and they've got two games in hand. They're only down by eight points. So, again, playoff positioning... For for me, I don't really care if we're going to be first. It'd be great to be first because I'd love to play. You know, the lower seed. Put another banner on the rafters for yeah, a division like, win. Blah. Really, it doesn't. It doesn't That's not matter. The banner that much. I want up there. No matter which way you go through the playoffs and try to get to the Cup final, you're going to have to run through the gauntlet. Yeah. The first round being a little bit easier isn't going to change anything. No. It's really not. So, um, just something to keep an eye on, though. It's just interesting that Arizona all of a sudden is creeping up into this conversation. And Vegas might kind of get bumped a little bit here, so we'll see where that lands us. But anyway, that's the only thing I wanted to bring up on the playoff positioning, unless there was something else you wanted to, to add to no, that. No, just, just going back to what we said earlier, yeah. is I don't think the Sharks should be pushing to to go you know, die hard against Calgary right. to win the division. Now, I'm not saying you know tank or anything, but um, there's still a chance that they could catch Calgary if mm-hmm. Calgary would lose a game here and there, which they haven't <laughs> really done. So... Um, Kudos to them for playing well, but if they start to slip just a little bit and the Sharks have that matchup, I think it's on March 31st Mm -hmm. um, at home against Calgary. That's going to be a huge game. Um, I mean, that could be almost like, I think last year we were playing Vegas towards the end, and it was at the time it was close for a division, Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up losing. But it could be a similar situation where the Sharks could leapfrog them Mm -hmm. by doing it themselves and beating them at home. Um, But the other thing about the Sharks' scheduling, I think, is fantastic because they have a lot more home games this end of the stretch of the right. season than they do uh, away games. So they, they're kind of hard road trips are done. Um, the Sharks have a great home record, so they're only going to expand on that. And so I think there will be a surge at, towards Calgary at mm-hmm. the top. But at the same time, don't play Kane. Don't play Carlson if right. they're not 100%. Rest them. Rest whoever else needs rest. You don't need to go all out for it. Another interesting matchup not having to do with the Pacific, uh, but uh, kind of a homecoming. Toronto played the New York Islanders recently, yes. and oh boy, did the <laughs> fans have fun at that one. Oh man, there was, there was a lot leading up to that game. Um, so for those who don't really pay attention outside of the Sharks right. news, John Tavares signed as a free agent. And in fact, that was our first show. We thought he was going to come to the Sharks. Um, he didn't. He went to Toronto and left the Islanders. So he left in his first year as a, as a UFA, as an unrestricted free agent, so he could choose wherever he wanted to go. And he went from the Islanders to Toronto, and Islanders fans were very bitter about it. Um, so what I saw was a lot of people were upset and didn't understand why the Islanders fans would boo and not welcome <laughs> him home because the Sharks did that with Patrick Marlowe. And I, I can see kind of the comparison, what they're trying to go for, but to me, the situation is completely different yeah. because Patrick, uh, uh, let, me, let me paint this scenario for you guys. <laughs> Patrick Marlowe is 26, 27 years old, uh, one of the top scorers in the league consistently, and he's a free agent, and he decides to go somewhere else and not sign with San Jose, right? And he decides to go somewhere that's about 300 miles away. What's about 300 miles away from San Jose? LA. Okay. He goes to sign with the Kinks. <laughs> Do you think he would be praised if he came back into the building? No. He'd be booed out of the building. Uh, they, <laughs> Just, they put a they put yeah. a tribute video to him, right? Yeah. Like, thank you for everything you've done. Oh, man. He would be public <laughs> enemy number one. People would be burning his jerseys. Yeah. They'd have, you know, it, it, it would be awful. I, I think... I think... I understand the yeah. Islanders. I understand their fans. I understand why they were upset. And I have no problem with it yeah and Sim- I similar in how how much that player means to the franchise but very different in that you know P- pat marlowe he was going from the sharks as what 35 years old 36 or 37 he, i mean he yeah. was leaving the sharks kind of at the tail of his career and you know they offered him i think maybe two years but he wanted the three and he was getting more money i mean it, it just made more sense for him to go to toronto it didn't make as, as much sense for the sharks to sign him there was no like bad blood or ill will with Tavares, he straight up said, like, yeah, I'd love to come back. Actually, never mind, I'm going to go with Toronto. So, yeah. And in the prime of his career. I think that was part of the problem is he kind of kind of strung teams along. Yeah. He didn't really, like, say, like, I'm not coming back to Islanders for sure. Yeah. So I think that kind of hurt the fans a little bit because they, you know, same with us. We thought, you know, they thought they had a chance of signing him. So mm-hmm. 
Um, I totally understand why they were upset, and I, I think it's a completely different situation from when Marlo came back, and he's beloved. Plus, he's not even in the same... I mean, they're in different divisions, the Islanders in Toronto, but the same conference. Yeah. You know, you're going to play a few times a year, whereas, you know, Toronto, we play. he's here once a year, and we're there once a year, yeah. so we don't see him as much. And we'd only see him in the finals in the playoffs. Right. Whereas they're probably going to see him in you know one of the the later rounds if right. they both make it too, but or you know if one happens to exactly. be in a uh, wild card position or something like that, yeah, it, it can be. Oh man, I, you know every time he goes and plays in that barn, he's just going to get oh booed for so the rest hard. of his career. Yeah, yeah, so hard. <laughs> it's his choice. It uh, he knew it what was going to happen. I mean, he got booed at the All Star game. Yeah, San Jose fans. Because they're upset that it didn't sign him. <laughs> I forgot. That's so. Right, that's yeah. two places where he's he's hated. Yeah, yeah. It's great. I think <laughs> I think there needs to be more villains, more heels in in the game. More storylines, right? Yeah. I think like for the Sharks, like Theo Fleury was probably one of the first ones that got oh, booed yeah. every time he touched the puck. Um, Ed Belfour, Chris Pronger. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I know there's a few more. There's plenty. Uh, yeah. uh, Campbell, Brian Campbell, oh, for a long time. Yeah, Soupy. <laughs> um, I don't know, there's just a few of those that, yeah. that people just just hated on him, mm-hmm. right? And it was great. It was so great because they were such great players that they loved it. They they yeah. loved getting booed because yeah. only good players get booed, right? Yeah. Nobody bad gets booed. That's well, just mean. It, it means I'm doing something right. If, right. if you don't like me, it's because they, I've done something right. They feed off of that, and it's great when there's such a great player. Oh, Team Mussolini was another one. Okay. There's such a great player <laughs> that always beats your team, and then you know you boo them, you boo them, you hate them so much, and then you beat them. It feels that much better. Yeah. I think it's kind of like a yin and yang thing, right? <laughs> Like you, you, yeah. Anyway, that's completely off topic. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, uh, so moving on from that, we'll talk about the uh, week in review. Uh, three games that we played. Mm-hmm. One not so hot. The other two pretty good. So we start off in Boston. And the Boston game. That's when Carlson re-injured his groin, and Marshawn went around him. So, I mean, you take out Carlson, that's five defensemen now instead yeah. of six playing in the game. So you're down a defenseman. You're down one of your horses that usually plays a lot of minutes. So that hurt the team. Um, the Sharks gave up two quick goals, too, and I think it was in the second period. Uh, LeBanc got robbed by Halak on the line. That would have made the game 3-2 to two and a lot more interesting. Um, but let's talk about the Evander Kane and, and Zdeno Char incident. <laughs> um, if you watch the replay, I've watched it several times, yeah. Evander Kane takes takes a hit up high from Chara, and Chara, granted, is huge. Yeah. He's six foot nine. Um, and that's without skates, yeah. right? So he's close to seven feet with skates. Um, and Evander's not a small guy. He's 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, Something like that, yeah. So, I mean, it, but compared to Char, he's, yeah. he's going to get hit high. Yeah. And if you watch, like, not just not just that one play, but if you rewind it about 10, 15 seconds before that, they're going at it in the corners, going hard. This is why I think Char should have gotten suspended because it wasn't... You have to have the whole context of the hit. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't. He knew what he was doing. He knew he drove through his elbow into his head, hit his head first. So, um, if you watch right after it happens, Evander looks at the ref like, "What is that?" Yeah. Chara looks at the ref like, you know, the total soccer innocent. Yeah. I didn't do anything. Like he was guilty as all guilty. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, I think there should have been supplementary supplemental um, discipline. Discipline. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think <laughs> I think there should have been a penalty called on the play. I don't think anyone would have argued if there was a penalty, if he got tossed, if there was a one or two game suspension. The only people complaining would have been Boston fans. I, I was going to say the announcer, oh, okay. the Boston announcer, but yeah. um, and the Boston fans. That's it. That guy's I, so annoying. By yes, the way, yes, he is. Jack Edwards. I don't know. Is? I don't care to know his name. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's a whole different topic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I, I think that should have been supplemental discipline, and I'm very upset with the league. I'm more upset about this one than yeah. than the last one that they missed, whatever that was. I don't yeah, even remember I, a month ago. I mean, I, I look at that play, and yeah, I mean, to me, it seems pretty obvious that you know something should have been called before the fighting had, that occurred. And I like actually something that you had said, where uh, Evander Kane had had brought up a it was in, was it in a tweet or was <laughs> what did, it, did he say? Af- the tweet afterwards, yeah. he didn't say anything. This is no, why no, 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 not that one. The oh. less talk part. Oh, yeah. this goes back. This is a post-game interview, right? Um, after the Calgary game on on New okay. Year's Eve. Okay. And the Sharks just got 
their butts kicked mm-hmm. that night. I think it was an eight to five or something game, and there was a bunch of fights at the end. and And Kane had mentioned uh, talking about Sam Bennett, right? Mm-hmm. And he said, um, you know, back in my day, there was less talk and more action, right. and I'm more about the action or something right. like that, right? So this this is a great example of Kane taking action because he took on Chara, who probably had thirty or forty pounds on him, at least six inches of reach. Yeah. And he got the jump on him a little bit early on and was kind of humble him. And then Chara got up and he woke up the beast. Yeah. <laughs> and Chara was just kind of like, you know, like, yeah, got, he had a, he got a good hold on him. So Kane couldn't get his right hand right. out. But, um, here's the way I see that. I think Kane knows he's going to lose that fight. I don't think Kane, people are going, oh, he jumped him from behind and whatever else. It was cheap and blah, blah, blah. I, I, again, it, I think that Kane just said, you know what? If you're not going to protect me, to the refs. Mm-hmm. If you're not going to protect me, then I'm going to stand up for myself. Let's talk. More action. He jumps up. Yes, he kind of grabs horse collars, Cara, uh, Chara, and kind of gets him down on the ice there and starts pummeling. At the same time, he knows when Chara gets up that he's going to be dealing with a much bigger human being. <laughs> he knows he has a very, sm- not very, he has a smaller chance of winning that fight. He knows exactly what he's getting into. And to hear the, the announcer for the Bruins just chirping him saying had enough he's gonna take your head off like a bottle cap dude you sit behind a desk <laughs> you have no clue if you went toe to toe with the vander king you get mopped he would mop, just the floor would be mopped with your head bro okay so let's not go there if you want to commentate on what's happening that's fine but to try to taunt a guy who could just make you swallow your teeth just because you've got a bigger guy on your team? Come on, bro. Let's not go there, please. So anyway, he knows exactly what he's getting into. That's my take on it. He doesn't care that he's probably going to get beat in this fight because he's sending a message. Right. You're not going to just do that to me and just get away with it. I don't care if you beat me in that fight. I'm coming after you. Well, I think it's great that he jumped Char because I don't think Char was expecting it. Yeah. Well. Right. Nope. <laughs> Who jumps Char, right? <laughs> nobody Who, can. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody does. So I think I think that's great that he yeah. he stuck up for himself. <laughs> I, yeah, I just again it, it and I got a little riled up. Apologize, <laughs> but it just it just it makes me mad like seeing somebody else like talking smack to a professional athlete who is just defending himself from yeah. a much larger human being, acting like he thinks he's the pit bull in the fight when he knows he's not. He knows he's the smaller guy. He doesn't he need glasses. He knows Charles how big he is. So let's not pretend like he didn't know what he was getting himself into. He knew exactly what he was doing, and my hat is off to Kane for doing it. Yeah. So that's my take. I'm on happy Kane's on our team. There you go. So what's yeah. the uh, the next one we had was... Uh, Colorado. Colorado. That's and right. you were actually at that game. I was. It was a very good game. Uh, we were There wasn't any lead changes. We went up, and we held the lead. And that mm-hmm. was the biggest takeaway for me was we didn't roll over. We didn't get uh, you know a two-goal lead and then say, okay, shut it down. You know They came back. They cut the lead in half. We score a goal. They come come back, we score a goal, right? So we we stayed ahead. We didn't take our foot off the gas. It was just a, a good, complete effort, I think. You know, uh, some small things here and there, just like any game. But I, I think that was a really good a really good win for for the Sharks against a team that you know they're a one line team, like you've said. But I think all in all, it was a nice, complete effort. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, Colorado's they're on the verge of being a good team they're not quite there yet they might make playoffs but they might squeak into that (laughs) that uh wild card spot but i think they're going to be a tougher team in another year or two uh once some more young guys (laughs) especially with ottawa (laughs) yeah (laughs) after this draft we'll see if they get uh was it jack is it jack hughes hughes yeah it's a hughes one of the hughes brothers Yeah. Yeah. yeah um if if they win the lottery and they get the first overall pick, ugh, Ottawa's going to look awful. But uh, Colorado's going to get that much better next year. Yeah. So um, a team that's up and coming, but it's also very good that the Sharks didn't let them come back and even it up and, right. and possibly even lose the game. So a good three points, another row, mm-hmm. if you will, regulation or overtime win. Um, did you say three points? Did I say three? I think you said three, yeah. This oh, soccer, bro. Sorry. <laughs> Two points. Yeah. Or not, uh, what I meant to say is not a three-point game. Yes, there you go. Yeah. There. There. <laughs> there. there. We got there. it. Yeah. And then yeah. nobody's Swedish. So anyway, um, <laughs> then after that, we had the game tonight, which was kind of cool. The uh, yeah. we, we finished the game, and we got to do on our live. We got to field some questions about that game, which was cool and, and everything. So And this game, compared to the to the other game, they did let the Blackhawks in. They, yeah. Blackhawks, Sharks went up one nothing. Blackhawks tied it. Sharks went up 2-1. Right. Blackhawks tied it, but the Sharks prevailed and scored. Yeah. 
Got a couple, got an empty netter at the end too. Yeah. So again, and I mean, not not a really dangerous team. They do have a lot of good weapons and like Taves and Kane, and they have stalwarts on D still. They're they're a good team. They're, they're not. Just, a, I don't even say they're a rollover team. No, definitely not. Definitely they just not. haven't. And Crawford's been out all year. And that speaks again to the the parity in the NHL. Like even a team that's got a really bad record, and you take a look at their roster, and you go, man, I would love to have those guys on my team. You know. So. But they've been playing well as of yeah. late in the last month or so. They've been surging and almost pushing for a playoff spot they're because of the loss tonight right. i think the one they played last night too it was a back-to-back for them um that kind of just kind of shut the door for them uh of a playoff hope so they could have gone into that way uh, wild card spot yeah. um so they weren't they weren't a pushover team they're not like bottom of the barrel ottawa senators with <laughs> I just bring this up real quick. Yeah, Chris Tierney is now the leading scorer, <laughs> scoring forward yes. <laughs> on Ottawa after they traded Duchesne and Stone away yeah. and to Zingle. So, yep. um, so good on Chris Tierney. That's great for him. You know, and and a lot of people are upset that he's got traded to Ottawa. I think, in a career standpoint, that's great for him because he's getting way more playing time, way more. You know, he, his stats are going to be up higher than they would be if you were on the Sharks. That is true. I miss him. Don't get me wrong. I would love to have him on the team, um, but I would rather have Carlson on the team than Tierney. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, one one point to make on that, and then we'll move on from this. Um, he's <laughs> so he's he's gone from what we said was a third line guy, and his ceiling was probably I said ceiling was probably a second liner, and you, I think you're saying maybe still a third liner. I'd say, I think I said 40, 50 points second liner. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, to be in the man. Yeah. He's the man in Ottawa. Man, How great is that? that I, I'm just I'm I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you, Chris. <laughs> like it's uh, as if he's watching, but um, yeah, I know it's 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 a great opportunity for him to show mm-hmm. the league what he can do, and it's unfortunate that he's not going to be playing with a first, uh, probably first overall um, caliber player on that team next, next season. Year. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a little bit longer for that rebuild to to take place, but. Oh, well. Um, in any case, yeah, I, I think it's a great opportunity for him. Get some minutes. Hopefully get traded. He's only got he's, he's got a two-year contract, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So maybe he gets traded somewhere, and, you know, he, he takes on another role on another team that actually can win. And who knows, Or right? he's part of the rebuild. Or he's Ottawa part of the rebuild. And he stays, and he's yeah. a key player there, which could happen. Very well could be. Yeah. Moving on from that, the upcoming games. So yep. we've only got two. This is a short week. Short week. Uh, yeah. So a big break between now and the next game, which is Thursday against Montreal in San Jose. Yeah. Um, that's going to be, you know, <laughs> called the circus is going to be in town because <laughs> normally at Sharks games, the the press is, you know, a handful, yeah. maybe six, six or so people. Um, and when Montreal or Toronto or probably those two, actually, um, when they come into town, it is... No, no joke. A circus. There's, <laughs> there is tons of more media. Uh, Mark Edward Vlasic will most definitely be interviewed. Right. Um, I don't know who else speaks French on the Sharks team. No idea. Maybe it might be it, but um, th- it's just a different atmosphere. But regardless, I think the Sharks should be able to beat Montreal. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, I think the Sharks can beat anybody. But yeah. um, Carey Price uh, leads that team, and um, it's interesting that Ty Domi's son. Uh, Max Max mm-hmm. was traded from Arizona to Montreal, and he's been yeah. doing very well. So he's going to be a tough guy, kind of like a Kachuk player. Yeah, uh, another son of a former <laughs> NHL player. I feel so <laughs> old. I knew other dads <laughs> playing in the NHL. Um, but uh, uh, they have some they have some good young talent, yeah. and um, Montreal's kind of like Colorado, a surging kind of rebuilding team. But they have Carey Price, who is the best goaltender in the world, at least the highest paid. Is he still? I think he is still. Oh yeah, but yeah, but I think he's still top goalie in the league. Fair enough. Uh, they're in a playoff spot because of Carey Price. There you go. Yeah, there's yeah. an MVP candidate right there. So it's funny you brought up Vlasic and speaking uh, of French, and uh, I remember him telling a story one time where he got pulled over by a police officer, and he just pretended that he didn't know English, <laughs> and I guess the police officer didn't know who he was because he was still pretty new to the league. And so he was just, you know, speaking French to him. The cop was like, right, "Fine, whatever. <laughs> just let him go." <laughs> That's how he got out of a ticket. Pretty in sweet. San Jose? I think so. Pretty huh? sure, yeah. So, uh, anyway, just a, a fun little story. I don't think we that would pass now. I think everyone knows who yeah. he is. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. Hey, you're, you're pickles. I know who yeah. you are. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Sign my jar of pickles. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go. All right, then we got a game on Saturday, right? Saturday afternoon, oh. which is just... I mean, I understand why they Kryptonite. do these afternoon games. They, they can't do every night game. Yeah. and um, I don't know if this one's going to be 
uh, nationally televised. I'll have to look that up. But mm. um, it's against St. Louis, and St. Louis is another, well, I wouldn't say rebuilding team. They're a team that everyone thought was going to be top of, including us, top of the central mm -hmm. uh, division, and they haven't been. In, but they've been surging, another team surging in the last month or so, and behind their rookie goaltender, Bennington. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, I just looked the other day, or earlier th today, that uh, he's got five shutouts. He's only played like a month, wow. or maybe two months, and he's he's not leading the league, but he's like second or third in the league in shutouts. Um, he's leading the league in save percentage and goals against average because he's hit those minimums of games right. played. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's playing on out, lights out right now. So hopefully the Sharks will be able to solve him. I don't think they've played against him yet. So um, that'll be interesting to see how he does. Now, Bennington is a goalie that was in their system that they expected to be good. Jake Allen kind of surpassed him a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Jake Allen was a starter. He's been struggling this year. They brought in Bennington, and he's been lights out. But he's not supposed to be this good. So um, they're waiting kind of for the bubble to kind of burst and, and for it to crash down to reality. And who knows if that's going to happen before playoffs or during the playoffs. Um, and that's assuming that St. Louis does get into yeah. that wild card spot. Yeah. But if it does continue, I wouldn't want to face St. Louis as a wild card team because they're a good dark horse team because yeah. they're so deep. Yeah. Um, that we they had their depth going right, into right. the season of and, their and, forwards. And, and I'd love to see the, the stats, not the goals against average and the save percentage, but I'd love to see the high danger chances, mm -hmm. right? I'd love to see what, what, what he's facing, right? Because if it's a lot of those low danger, medium danger ones, and he's a, a very good goalie, he's probably going to stop the majority of those. He's still, you know, young, very, very young goaltender. So mm -hmm. I would be surprised if he's seeing a lot of high danger chances and saving them all right so i think it, it might be a, a telling sign from kind of going back to what we've been talking about with martin jones is if they're playing good solid defense around him and he's only seeing the lower percentage chance shots then maybe that's where all these really good numbers for this goaltender are coming from i'm sure he's still a very good goalie don't get me wrong right but if that's the case it certainly helps yep so, so this week the sharks are playing two teams with two good goalies yeah We'll see how they do. And they're the third highest scoring team. Something's got to give, right? <laughs> Hopefully it goes our way. So uh, this is pretty much the end of the show. So did you want to uh, plug the, sure. the merch there? Yeah. We got merch. Okay. We got hats. We got hats. We got shirts. <laughs> Here's just one of them. Yeah. But that's, so that's the gray. We also have, again, the uh, black and the white. No, teal. Teal. Ah, teal, saying. black, gray, and Why a women's deep V black shirt. The deep V. That's right. Right. So huh. anyway... <laughs> uh, we keep talking this stuff to you because uh, they look awesome, they feel awesome, and it also helps support the show. So if you want to support the show, help us keep doing what we're doing, uh, feel free to visit our store. Yeah. We also have stickers if you just want to decorate your laptop. So, yeah, there you go. In any case, that is the end of episode number 39. It was a lot of fun. So we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor.